Hi, I'm Alex Martinez, and in this third video from this series, I am going to show you how to add M units to your CI CD pipeline. There is something important here. You will need a Nexus credentials. So if you don't have them, you will have to get them before starting this. For more information about the Nexus credentials, you can go to the article that is linked in the description of the video to see the links to the documentation to learn what exactly is that if you don't know. In the two previous videos, we learned how to set up the basic configuration for the CICD pipelines and how to add a configuration for any decryption that you need to do in your properties. Let's do it then. So before starting, we have to make sure that our M units are actually working and they are successful. Otherwise, we might encounter some issues in the pipeline because we did not run this earlier. So here you can see that my two tests are working. Everything is in green, so I am ready to proceed. And as I mentioned, you will have to have Nexus Enterprise credentials for this. So if you are not sure if they work, you can come to this link. I'm going to put it in the description of the video, or it's also in the article that I wrote. And here you will be able to put your username and password to make sure that your credentials actually work. So once you add your credentials, simply click on login and you will see this page because you are able to log in. As you can see here, I am logged in into my user. The next step is to go into your GitHub repo and same as before, go into the settings tab, scroll down and select secrets and variables actions. We already had three different repository secrets that we set up in the previous videos. So now we are going to create a new one. First, we are going to add the Nexus username that you just used in the previous screen. In my case, I'm Martinez Mule and click on add secret. Now let's create the second one. In this case, now we are going to set up the Nexus password and you put here your own credential and click on add secret. Now we have set up five different repository secrets. The next step is to modify our build.yaml file, which is the one that is running the workflows for the GitHub Actions. Please go into the description of the video and click on the article so you can copy and paste the script that I'm about to show you here. As you can see here by this green line, these are the new changes that we are adding. We are adding the new test job and we are adding the new needs test into the build job. Because we need to run this synchronously, as I explained in a previous video, we need to run the test job before the build job. There are other two additional changes into the build and the deploy jobs. One is here in the build job, if you go to the build with Maven command, I added the dskipped mUnit test so we can send this parameter and to not run the mUnit tests on these two other jobs because we will already be running the tests on the first job. If you scroll down to the deploy job, you will also see that I added the same thing here in the maven deploy command. So now if we take a look at the test job, the first steps are the same to the other ones, Ubuntu latest, and then we check out this repo, cache the maven dependencies, set up JDK 8. Again, you can set up another JDK if you want. And then here in the test with maven command, this will change a little bit than what we have been doing before. Here are our two secrets that we had set up, Nexus username and Nexus password. But in this case, the variables that we will be creating here will not be used in our maven command. I will show you in a bit where we are using this. And then if you have a decryption key, you have to send it in this command as well. Also, in this case, we are sending the decryption key directly here as the secure.key property, as opposed to what we were doing before, which we were setting up the decryption key. Now we have to set up the property directly. So if you have a different property name that is not secure.key, please make sure to modify it in this parameter. The other thing that we can see here in this command is that we are setting up a settings.xml file directly. So in this case, we are saying that it is under the Maven folder and then the settings.xml file will be found there. So we have to create it. In our root folder, we are going to create a new folder called .maven. 
And then inside this folder, we are going to create a new file called settings.xml. Now again, you will have to reference to the article that is posted in the description of the video, so you can copy and paste the contents of this file. In this case, we are adding a new server that is called Mule Repository, and we will be linking the Nexus username and Nexus password from our secrets. We are also creating a new profile that is called Mule, and it contains this repository for the Mule repository that matches the server. So now this Nexus username and Nexus password will be taken from what we are sending here in the build.yaml. These two environment variables that are not being used anywhere in our Maven command will be passed down and will reach the settings.xml here. And that's it. Those are all the changes that we need to do in order to run this test. So now let's save both files and push all of these changes into our GitHub repo to run the GitHub Actions. And same as before, as soon as we push all of the changes, we will be able to see that the action is running now. If you click on it, you will be able to see the details of each different job. In this case, now we have first the test job, then the build, and then the deploy. Let's open the test job to see how it's doing. And after roughly two minutes, we are able to see our unit coverage summary, as well as the number of tests and if there were any errors, failures, or skipped. In this case, there were two tests and both of them were successful. Notice how I only have 33% of the application coverage with my M units. In the next video, we will see how to make sure that this coverage is a higher percentage so we don't let this happen in the real life scenario. The build job already finished and now it's up to the deploy now. And we can see in Runtime Manager that this application is being currently redeployed. And once again, as soon as this application is deployed, you can go back to see that all of the three steps have been successful. And that's all for now. In the next video, we will incorporate the MUnit coverage into the CICD pipeline. I hope you liked the video. Remember to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.